Welcome to Teams Tuesday. It's October the 20th, 2020. We have a great speaker, Anna Gereri, who's discussing Microsoft team-based approvals with Power Automate. I'm your host, Peter Ward, from New York City. Stay tuned for the next 45 minutes. It's Teams Tuesday. Thank you. Very pleased to present here. So today we'll be talking about how to use Microsoft Teams and Power Automate together. So what is Power Automate? So Power Automate, you can develop automated workflows to create business logic and models across the processes using connected data sources like you can use SharePoint, you can use Azure, or you can use SQL to work with your data. Like you might need some business processes implemented over your data or you might want to go through some approvals of your documents. So that's where business process uh, implementation, that's where you can use Power Automate. It is more about democratization of automation and workflow. You can also enable governance through developing approval workflows. Then it is very, very deeply integrated with all of the Microsoft 365 products, be it SharePoint, be it Azure or be it Planner, Teams, you name the product and it has a lot of integration value added to it. So who are the audience of using this product? So any integration users like who are working on integrating applications or integrating the UI elements with the backend data. So those integration users can develop flows and use those flows then a citizen developers, as I said, that it is a no code solution. So very good for citizen developers to spin up automations for their personal or team productivity. So you can also develop power automate flows for your personal use as well. Like you want some reminders for yourself based on your calendar, like spin up a flow and let it configure it to send you reminders, then it will send you reminders. So it is both advantages for personal as well as enterprise level of applications. Then of course for admin IT or pro developers, like if I have a development team and if they are thinking on writing code of implementing a business process or developing flows, then I would like suggest at least consider uh, developing flows with using Power Automate that would save you time and get the product out of the door rather than like writing like thousand line of code to implement same thing that could be possible with just few actions by doing some few actions in your workflow in Power Automate. Let's talk about a little deep level like what flow consists of. So the product is known as Power Automate. But when you create a workflow inside a Power Automate, that is called Flow. So that is why you might hear me talking about like Power Automate or Flows. When I'm talking about Flow, I'm referring to a specific workflow. So what does a Flow consist of? So Flow consists of connectors. Connectors are like you can connect to the services like Outlook, OneDrive, Office 365, SharePoint, Twitter, Salesforce, or Dropbox, whatever you want your workflow to do. So technically, it's kind of a wrapper around API. It's an API which you are putting it in your workflow. So there are three types of connectors. One is standard, premium, and custom connectors. Standard connectors are the connectors which are part of Office 365 licenses. Premium connectors are only part of specific flow plan. So when we talk about flow licensing, you will understand this more. And then there are custom connectors. The um, developers, like people who are developers, then can use their own APIs to develop the custom connectors. So something that is not available as an 
connector in Power Automate that doesn't stop you to build your workflows, right? You can have your developers to use their own API to build the custom connectors. So Okay, so am I yeah. correct with the connectors then? They're basically, it's allowing you to point and click to a Salesforce or ServiceNow application yep. or tenant. Okay, so if it's not a connector to obviously to another Office 365, then you would be using Microsoft Graph. Is that a correct assumption? Yep, we can, something that is not available in those connectors, you can use Microsoft Graph if a Graph API exists for what you want to do. And if you find that you have nothing available, like not a connector, not an API, but you have some of your custom API, which is hosted in Azure, and then you want to use your custom API, then also you can build a custom connector and use your custom API within that. It does not limit you in what you want to use. So are the connectors, do you get charged like per connect? It's built in the licensing. Like if I have an E3 license, I get to use Power Automate, but then it is limited to like 2000 runs per user per day. So for example, if I'm using 10 connectors in my flow, if the flow cycle runs once, then my 10 runs are considered. So each connector equals to one run. And okay. that way, 2000 runs per user are allowed under E3 license or even license. Any Microsoft license which includes Power Automate has standard connectors available and 2000 runs per day per user. So each connector can be trigger or an action. So what is trigger and what is action? For example, I want to build a workflow when a new SharePoint item is added. So my trigger is when a new SharePoint item is added. If I want to run my workflow when I receive a new email, in that case, my trigger is a new email. So there are two types of connectors. One is triggers and other is actions. So what are actions? Actions are like what you want to do in your workflow. Do you want to send an email? Do you want to update a SharePoint list item? And do you want to send an email to Microsoft Teams? To a user or a channel? So what you want to do within your flow is what an action is. So connector can be of only two types, triggers or actions. Triggers are what kicks off the workflow, what makes the workflow to run. There can be two types of trigger. One is polling trigger. So you call your service at a specified frequency to check for new data. It's kind of a push notification where it goes and checks like has the event occurred or has the data changed. So that is a polling trigger. And there is a push trigger like manually a user performs an action and then the workflow kicks off. For example, if I press a button, then workflow kick, kicks off. If I select an item in SharePoint list and I click on this particular flow to run, then a workflow kicks off. So polling trigger is kind of an automatic trigger and push trigger is kind of a manual trigger where user performs an action and something happens. Action means what your flow will do, what you want your workflow to do. So actions run after trigger. Once the workflow is triggered, actions will run, whatever you want your workflow to do. Actions can use dynamic content. For example, I'm working on a workflow which acts upon a specific SharePoint list item. So it can use the data from that SharePoint list item. So that is how actions can use dynamic content. So Power Automate is part of Microsoft Office 365 licensing, but it has limit of number of API calls, 2000 API calls per user per day. It has only standard connectors. It does not provide premium connectors. For example, if I want to call any API directly from my flow, then it is a premium connector. So I can't do that using standard Office 365 license. So what consists of API call? Any connector, that is being used in your flow is a API call. So the number of connectors in your flow and number of times those flow runs is your number of API calls. So I also have a reference link here. Now coming to the topic of how to use Power Automate with Microsoft Teams. So these are the connectors we have in Microsoft Teams. So I have bifurcated here on how to use these connectors in what scenarios. So if you're working on a team provisioning process, which we'll see in the demo today, so you'll know more about it. So you can use connectors like create a team or a channel, add member to a team. Then 
if you want to interact with the users or team channels or want to get input from the users using Power Automate, then you can use this actions, which is like post a message to the user or a channel on a team, uh, post a reply to a message to a user or channel on the team, post an adaptive card to your user on channel. We will see this today. And if doing like conference or a meeting solution kind of a thing, then you can also create team meetings in your Microsoft Flow. So if you want to do some automations where meeting gets automatically scheduled based on some data, you can use this connector. So adaptive cards are like UI components. They are authored like in JSON. So that might sound a little technical, but you don't have to deal with JSON. That's a good news. So like those are compatible UI component can work in any application. And the, still the JSON code still remains same. So wherever you put the adaptive card, it will adapt to that application UI. So for example, I want to do an expense report form and I develop an adaptive card, which is an UI component for that express report form. I can use that same code in any application, like be it a Windows application, be it Microsoft Teams, be it SharePoint, or be it Planner. So that makes it a platform independent UI component. And there is no code to be dealt with because Microsoft has a designer built to design the adaptive cards, which I'll show in a bit. So there is no code you have to deal with it. And it will also be automatically styled. Let me take you to the adaptive card designer. So this is the adaptive card designer provided by Microsoft. So here you can select like what for what application you want to design the adaptive card. For example, let's say for Microsoft Teams as we are doing a Teams demo today, then we also have like samples, like let me do a new card. It already provides such good looking samples, which can provide you a starting point if you are not sure on, on how to do this adaptive cards. So for example, for our demo today, I use this sample as my starting point. So what I did is once you use the sample, whatever you want to use, then you can go here, click on the components. Like I click on the title here and I need to go here and then I don't want to call it expense approval. I want to call it teams approval. All right, I, I don't want to call this trip to UAE. I want to call it new teams request. I don't need this export as PDF button, remove it. I don't need this section as well. I'll remove it. Theme for this, theme for. So I just need this, this information. It was as easy as building my own card. And it has all the options here, like layout, styling, whatever you want to do, like bolder, color, Right, and if I want to add something new, I need to just like drag and drop. All right, so I, if I want to add a date, then add a date here. All right, so whatever I want to do, use drag and drop, use the element properties here. Once I'm satisfied that, okay, this is I, how I want my adaptive card to look like, I will freeze it and I'll click on this preview mode. All cross-browser functionality there? Yep. Yeah. So uh, I can test my adaptive card. So on approve, there is an action configured. So um, this is showing me the action approve. And then if I click on reject, it will show me comments box. So test comments. And I click on send. Then it will show me the action reject and the reject comments. So I can take input from the users. User can perform actions in this card. And once you are like satisfied that you have designed your adaptive card and it is working as expected, what you need to do is you click on copy card payload. And once you do that, all the JSON you see in the bottom it is copied to your clipboard and paste it wherever you need to use it. 
so this ui is platform independent it will design itself based on where it is hosted we'll talk about how to implement approvals with teams and power automate that is what the main goal of this presentation today so there are two ways to implement a team approval using power automate what is like teams approval for example if just in any application or a tool where an approval process is implemented then probably you will get an email that something needs to be approved you can provide your decision directly in the email like you would have buttons in the email to do approve and reject or there may be a link in the email where you can click on the link and provide your decision whatever you need to do as an approval right so today we will do that via teams so approval will get notification and also an ui inside teams to provide their decision like approve or reject and they can directly do approve and reject from the team and then the process would go ahead there are two ways of uh, implementing approvals with power automate so power automate already has an inbuilt structure for doing approvals so we will use create an approval and wait for approval actions which are like inbuilt actions of power automate and there is also another way like posting an adaptive card to a teams channel or a user and then wait for a response from user so those are both two different ways of implementing approvals with teams from power automate so we will see both of those options and this is the demo scenario so user will fill up a form to create a new team request like we are developing an application for it department of a big organization where they would need new team created every now and then but now there needs to be some approval process attached to it so that microsoft team is not flooded with unnecessary new teams that is why it department needed a teams provisioning process where user will fill up a form to create a new teams request power automate will send this request to the set of approvals then approver can approve or reject that request if they approve the request then power automate will create that new team and add the members and the owners to the team and if approver rejects then user will be notified so i'll i'll jump to to my demo as it show time all right let me take you the to the flow so one i have two flows here one is uh, that is built using the adaptive card logic and one is using the the traditional power automate approval actions so first i'll show you how the demo works and then we'll go into the details on what has been done behind the scenes to develop this right so first i'll show you how it works so let me go to my teams so i have team for a demo where everyone in our team uses this to do the demos i have tab here called teams request and i can create a new request from here so this is just a sharepoint list where user can come in and create new requests all right so i'll i'll click on new item i'll provide the team name so let me do a meetup demo one and then i'll put just for demo then do i want it to be private team all right i'll create a private team so there is an option for user whether they want a private team or a public team and who would be the owner so i would say i i am the owner and then for example i would say peter is also an owner and i would let me see who other my team members would be the members all right so this is what i have provided the data for my new team request and i'll click on save now that should trigger the flow and do its thing so let's save this and so, and once this is saved it will create an approval in this another approval channel this is where uh, peter i mentioned that it takes few seconds for the workflow to like kick off and do its thing so, so, let's see so what a power automate application on an autopilot on an airplane probably wouldn't be appropriate <laughs> so like usually approval processes are like it's not like instant right approval processes are more of a like goes over days right user doesn't 
provide an approval within a minute so yeah, yeah, like yeah. little thing here and there i think should be fine yeah if you see here in under in the approval channel i have received a new approval request here this is an adaptive card where i have used it here so it says new team request it is pending it shows me the team name and i can click here and it will take me to the shapeant list item which has this request data all right going back so it also includes the details of the request which says like who submitted this request what what is the team name and when it was submitted and what is the description and whether it is a private team or not all right so currently i am only creating the request and approving because i don't want to like switch logging through multiple users in microsoft teams so i i also have approval permissions i'll click on approve button i can also click on reject but for demo purpose we will we'll click on the approve button and this will take my response and it will also tell me thank you for the response and response was provided by anna chaveri so this is also a nice little thing so that if another user comes in this channel they would know that decision has been provided by another approver so that they don't make a mistake of again approving it right so as i have configured my workflow to get response of only one approver not of all approvers all right so my workflow has kicked off based on my approval decision and it has created a new team here all right and yes. it also has added the members and the owners in the team all right so um, this is the first scenario where we used an adaptive card to do the approvals now we would also now do second scenario where we will use power automate approvals to create the approval so let's do the demo first and we'll see behind the scenes how it works so let me go and turn on that workflow all right let me go and create another request and kick off the work so as i explained i want to also show the another approach that is why i am creating a new request and showing you the another approach so i will say need a demo to demo testing all right so let's save and this will kick off the work flow soon all right our new item has been created let's go to the approval channel and yes so peter this time it has taken a second only no i'm looking at now yeah yeah all right so this is you see there 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 was a difference on the on the card the approval card that we see from the previous example and the this example so this is using the inbuilt approval actions of uh, power automate so this looks a little different on what we saw before right so it it shows me the details of the request so i'll i'll provide my approval decision this ask me for comments uh, i don't want to provide comments and submit all right so this has created meetup demo two teams and also created a default channel i hope it makes sense we will go to behind the scenes on what is done to implement this right so let's go to one of the workflow so this is a workflow where we have implemented default power automate approval actions so let's edit this workflow and see what's going on behind the scenes so i have edited the workflow and this is the trigger right we talked about connectors and triggers so mm -hmm. the trigger of my workflow is when an item is created in my shapeon list shapeon site address where my list resides and it takes the list name like i have this list where users are creating the request of asking for a new team right so this is the trigger now whatever follows under the trigger are all actions like what what is my workflow doing what is my flow doing so i have this main scope here i'll explain this a little later that's one of the tip i'm going to share about like what you need to take care while designing your flows okay so this is a create approval action 
this is one of the connectors connectors are like triggers and actions trigger is here and actions are here right power automate provides and create an approval action and we are using that so whenever i add this action to my flow it will ask me for this input values so one is what is the type of approval i want to create whether i want to create an approve reject option where everyone must approve approve or reject option first to respond type or custom responses for example i also want to add one more option like p submit if approver wants to resubmit the request back to the requester if i want to add the third option then i'll use this or this the custom responses option right so for simplicity of the demo i use this where approve or reject first to respond this means that approval will get approve and reject buttons and whoever approver responds first that decision will be considered and workflow will go ahead okay so if i want approval decision of each approver then i need to select this everyone must approve option or this custom responses okay if i want something additional to approve and reject then i need to provide an appropriate title for my approval so i say that okay there is a new team request for this team name then who this approval is assigned to which people i want to give approval decision on this who are my approvers so here i have just used my name as a static value but what you can do is like use users from an office 365 group or azure ad group or members of a team you can use those options like there is an action to get members of office 365 group and then i can get all the members and put all the members here from that action so we could also do that then what are the details of my request so of course i don't want user to go into sharepoint and then open the request i want to show all the details of the request in my approval card itself right so that user does not have to navigate away from teams that is why i am including all important data about the request in the details here how do you format this data the normal formatting for example html formatting or rich text formatting does not work here microsoft has got something like markdown formatting so you need to learn a little bit of syntax on how markdown formatting works and then format your data here so for example i wanted this all labels to be like bold strong so that is why i have to use this two asterisks here and two asterisks here to say that any any text that falls between this asterisks thank you very much anna very good one question we had which was mm -hmm. you're like an admin person when you create a workflow and you need to write to say another list what happens if you don't have access to that list that means so here i'm updating back the status of the request whether the request is approved or rejected to sharepoint now here this action uses a connection so for here for demo purposes i'm using my account but in real scenario what this should do is this action should uh, use a service account so that service account is given specific permission to that sharepoint list so whoever user runs this workflow but this action will be there, like this update in sharepoint will be performed by the service account so that the permission issues the user doesn't face the permission issues and that is how the flow runs are counted so for example is this action is running under my account then whenever this action runs it is considered as flow run under my account so my counter of flow run is considered because my account is configured in the connection so best practice is, is to use service account in your action because a user might not have required permissions on what a flow wants to do and mm -hmm. also you don't want to make it user dependent for example if a user account is used here and then that user leaves the organization and the account is deactivated then flow will stop running okay so, and now we're uh, five past the hour so we're a little bit over thank you and again 
for your time. I know it's late where you are. So for all the attendees, thanks for attending. Thank you. All right. Thank you.